Angiotensin II receptor blockers, often referred to as ARBs or Sartan drugs, are a class of medicines that are used to treat high blood pressure and systemic heart failure. They work by inhibiting receptors for angiotensin II, thus reducing blood pressure and decreasing the workload of the heart. In this visual mnemonic video, we'll give you an easy way to remember all the characteristics and uses for ARBs. Uh-oh, this young boy is causing all sorts of mischief at school. And to make things worse, it looks like he's being encouraged along by Satan himself. You know the classic plot device of having an angel and a devil on your shoulders? Well, the Satan here is our symbol for Sartan drugs. Get it? Satan for Sartan? You see, angiotensin receptor blockers all have drug names ending with Sartan. These drug names include Losartan, Candesartan, and Valsartan. Let's explore our scene to learn more about these drugs. We'll start by reviewing how Sartan drugs actually work. Take a look at the angel behind Satan. It looks like our angel is trying to stop Satan's influence, but Satan is blocking it. This angel with two wings is our recurring symbol for angiotensin II, because angel sounds like angiotensin, right? Satan blocking this angel then should help you remember that Sartan drugs work by blocking angiotensin II receptors, which is why the drug class is named the angiotensin receptor blockers or ARBs. Recall from physiology that angiotensin is a powerful vasoconstrictor, which also stimulates the release of aldosterone. The direct vasoconstricting effects of angiotensin II and its indirect effects via aldosterone together cause an increase in blood pressure. Blocking angiotensin II receptors with ARBs therefore prevents the angiotensin II from functioning, thereby decreasing blood pressure. As a side note, angiotensin receptor blockers also disrupt the negative feedback loop between angiotensin and renin in the kidneys. As a result, ARBs may cause a compensatory increase in renin secretion to compensate for the perceived lack of angiotensin II. This appears as a high PRA, or high plasma renin activity. This is actually somewhat high yield for test day, but we didn't symbolize it here because you should just reason through it. Let physiology be your best mnemonic, right? Now that we've covered the mechanism of ARBs, let's go into their clinical use. Oh no. Under Satan's direction, this boy is deflating some balls that the other students were going to play with at recess. These deflating balls makes me think of decreasing blood pressure, which is one of the major clinical uses of ARBs, since deflation is just a reduction in pressure, right? As we described earlier, ARBs prevent angiotensin-mediated vasoconstriction and aldosterone production. This reduces systemic vascular resistance and blood volume, decreasing blood pressure. This is exactly why these drugs are often used in the treatment of hypertension. Now you might be thinking, aren't ACE inhibitors also used for treatment of high blood pressure? Well, actually, both ARBs and ACE inhibitors can be used to treat hypertension. However, there are important distinctions between these two drug classes. You see, ARBs are usually prescribed only when a patient is intolerant to ACE inhibitors. In other words, ACE inhibitors are preferred as first-line agents over ARBs for the treatment of high blood pressure. This is because ACE inhibitors have been demonstrated to reduce all-cause mortality in patients, while ARBs have not. So why might we need ARBs then? Well, if you recall from our other videos, ACE inhibitors also have many side effects. These include the development of a dry cough and angioedema due to bradykinin buildup. In stark contrast versus ACE inhibitors, ARBs do not increase bradykinin levels, so they do not typically lead to cough or angioedema. As a result, ARBs are used to treat hypertension in patients who cannot tolerate ACE inhibitors due to their side effects. Make sense? Now let's learn about the other common clinical uses for ARBs. Take a look at this torn up heart on this love letter. No wonder, the poor boy must have been recently rejected in love. His heartbreak and angst must have been what turned him to doing evil under Satan's influence. By the way, this torn heart on the love letter should help you remember that ARBs help treat systolic heart failure. You know, a broken heart for heart failure. In particular, ARBs are used in cases of left ventricular systolic dysfunction. They help here because of their ability to inhibit vasoconstriction and decrease blood pressure, as we've previously covered. By reducing blood pressure, ARBs decrease the afterload on the heart that the left ventricle has to pump against, thereby lowering the heart's workload. Over time, this prevents problematic heart growth and remodeling that eventually leads to sudden cardiac death or arrhythmia in patients. 
Along with other types of drugs like beta blockers and aldosterone inhibitors, ARBs can therefore reduce the mortality of patients with heart failure. Next, let's turn our attention to that candy jar full of jelly beans on that desk. The teacher must have kept the candy there as special treats for students. The jar full of sugary candy is our symbol for diabetes, since diabetes is characterized by high blood sugar, right? But that's not all. These aren't just any candy. They're jelly beans shaped like kidneys. Together, the sugary, kidney-shaped jelly beans should help you remember that ARBs are useful in the treatment of diabetic nephropathy. Because diabetic nephropathy refers to kidney damage that results from diabetes. Get it? In patients with diabetes and hypertension, ARBs can help protect the kidneys from damage. These drugs induce vasodilation of the kidney's efferent arteriole. This reduces the pressure inside the glomerulus and lowers the glomerular filtration rate. By lowering the intraglomerular pressure, ARBs slow the rate of thickening in the glomerular basement membrane and slow the progression of chronic kidney disease in patients with diabetes and hypertension. This is a lot of detail, so just remember these kidney-shaped jelly beans in this candy jar to remember that ARBs can be used for treatment of diabetic nephropathy. So now that we've covered all the main clinical uses of ARBs, let's review the side effects. Recall the deflated balls we talked about earlier when we said ARBs can be used to treat hypertension? Well, it should be pretty easy to rationalize that you can go too far the other direction and cause hypotension, or low blood pressure, as a side effect. This should be really easy, so let's just move on. There's another important side effect that you'll want to keep in mind for test day. Take a look at those bananas in the brown bag near the desk. You know how every kid brought bananas to school for lunch? Well, these bananas should remind you of potassium, and specifically of high potassium, or hyperkalemia. We're talking about high potassium, since ARBs can induce hyperkalemia. Remember how ARBs lower aldosterone levels in the body? Well, aldosterone usually causes the kidneys to excrete potassium into the urine. By reducing aldosterone levels, ARBs increase potassium retention by the kidneys, which can lead to hyperkalemia. Also, ARBs can increase creatinine levels, which generally reflect the decreased glomerular filtration rate from lower blood pressure. And finally, ARBs can elevate the risk of lithium toxicity. These last two points aren't very important to remember for test day. Instead, just keep in mind some of the main side effects of ARBs, namely hypotension and hyperkalemia. We're almost done, but let's take a few minutes to learn about some special cases where prescribing these drugs may be inadvisable. Yikes, the boy is putting a tarantula into the candy jar. That's sure to scare the teacher and the other students when they return. This tarantula should help you remember that ARBs are teratogenic. Get it? Tarantula for teratogenic? Essentially, this means that ARBs should be avoided during pregnancy. Angiotensin II signaling plays an essential role in kidney development of the fetus, especially during the second and third trimesters of pregnancy. Since ARBs can restrict the downstream signaling of angiotensin II, this can lead to fetal kidney defects when taken by pregnant women. So we've learned that ARBs are not recommended during pregnancy. It's also important to keep in mind that ARBs should not be taken by individuals with bilateral renal artery stenosis. In case you don't remember, bilateral renal artery stenosis describes the narrowing of arteries that enter both kidneys. In these patients, almost no blood enters the kidneys, so angiotensin II plays a massive role in maintaining the glomerular filtration rate. You see, when very little blood enters the glomerulus via the afferent arteriole, dilation of the efferent arteriole exiting the glomerulus will further lower glomerular pressure. This basically reduces renal filtration to nothing, where your kidneys don't function at all. Inhibition of angiotensin II in patients with bilateral renal artery stenosis can therefore lead to rapid renal failure. For this reason, you should keep an eye out for a rapid increase in creatinine after starting an ARB. Alright, that's it for ARBs. Let's do a quick recap. Angiotensin receptor blockers, or ARBs for short, are a class of drugs that have a common sartan ending. These drug names include losartan, candesartan, and valsartan. As their name suggests, these drugs work by blocking angiotensin II receptors. This reduces angiotensin-mediated vasoconstriction and suppresses aldosterone release, both factors that contribute to lowering of blood pressure. ARBs have a very similar clinical use to ACE inhibitors, 
Clinically, ARBs are used in the treatment of high blood pressure, although they are a second-choice drug used in patients who cannot tolerate ACE inhibitors. By reducing blood pressure and afterload, ARBs are also helpful in the treatment of heart failure. Finally, ARBs can help protect the kidneys from damage in patients with diabetes and or hypertension. In general, ARBs are prescribed to patients who are intolerant to ACE inhibitors, providing similar vascular benefits without the same side effect profile. However, ARBs do have some of their own side effects. For example, high doses of these drugs can lead to hypotension. They can also induce hyperkalemia by decreasing aldosterone release. ARBs are also teratogenic and should be avoided in pregnant women. Lastly, ARBs are contraindicated in patients with bilateral renal artery stenosis, as their use can lead to rapid kidney failure. Okay, now we're actually done. Let's get out of here before Satan corrupts us, too. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and check out our newest lessons. For more resources on this topic, including fact lists and interactive review images, click the image next to the More Here arrow. I'll see you next time.